Hi there, Mr. Sutton here with the AB Calculus 4.6 Extra Practice Number 2 Solutions on Graphical Analysis. For this problem, we're given the graph of f prime, and we want to know which of these down here could be the graph of f. So first thing I'll look at is where f prime is crossing the x-axis, specifically changing sign. We know that f prime is changing sign at 1, 3, and 6. It also changes sign at 4 except that f prime is undefined there. Um, so this is a little bit more ambiguous as to what it means for the original graph. But 1, 3, and 6, definitely, because those are the derivative exists there and we're changing sign, we know that f is going to have extrema at those 3x values. So taking a look at my three graphs, looking at graph 1, graph 1 at x equals 1 does not have a max or a min, so we can eliminate graph 1. Graph 2 at 1 has a max, along with at 3 and at 6, I said max, it has a min, it has an extreme, one way or another, at 1, 3, and 6. And graph 3 also has extrema at 1, 3, and 6. Now graph 3 also has an extreme at 4. And there is a sign change in the graph at x equals 4. So this, you know, graph 3 could still be the graph that goes with this f prime. But then graph two, the original function doesn't even exist there, and maybe that's what's causing this non-differentiable spot. So again, that's not enough to choose between graphs two and three. Looking at some of the other slopes, f prime is negative from zero to one, and graphs two and three are both decreasing on that interval. f prime is positive from one to three, graphs two and three are increasing there, and if you look at the, the rest of the slopes, you're going to see that 2 and 3 actually both match all of the slope values for the f prime graph here. The only difference between 2 and 3, if you look really closely, is that there's a discontinuity, a jump, at x equals 4, where 3 just has a cusp and these are all linked up. So these different y values is really the only difference. Now, unfortunately, f prime graph is not going to tell you anything about the y values, only about the slopes. So for that reason, two and three are both gonna be possible graphs for this f prime. So choice E. For this problem, we wanna know which pairs of graphs could represent a graph and its derivative. So taking a look at these on question one here, well, we see a graph that is both increasing and concave up. So we would expect the derivative of this to be both positive and also increasing. And we have a graph that is positive and increasing. Um, so one is looking pretty good, and if you think about it, these both look like exponential functions. Certainly we know that the derivative of e to the x is also e to the x. So all of these indicate that one is a good answer. So we're gonna keep that one around. Looking at uh, the second pair now, for this one we have a turnaround, a max, at x equals zero. So we ought to have an f prime of zero that is also zero, right? f prime should equal zero at this spot. But looking at the f prime graph, f prime is positive where it should be zero. Um, so because of that, we're gonna eliminate this one from consideration. Now we go down to option three. So we're looking for an f prime value of zero right about here. And looking over at f prime, we do cross the x-axis there. Initially, this graph of f is increasing, so f prime should be positive, and it is. Then f is decreasing, so f prime is negative. So it looks like f, the f slope and the f prime sign match up for this whole thing. So we have to keep three around. So therefore, it looks like choice D, options one and three, is the way to go. For this problem, on the interval from negative 1.5 to positive 1.5, we have some f function whose first derivative is given right here. We want to know which of these intervals has a graph that is uh, concave down. So we're basically asking where is f double prime negative? Well, before we can answer that, and we are allowed to use the graph on this, but before we can easily answer that, we need to figure out what f double prime looks like. So let's take the derivative of f prime. So that's going to be e to the something, whose derivative is also e to the something. But now we have to multiply by the derivative of the something. So that's going to be 4x cubed minus 4x in a parentheses. And then the derivative of minus 2 is just 0, so we don't have to write it here. 
So on our calculator, we're going to figure out where this equals zero, and then we're going to figure out where f double prime dips below the x-axis based off of these critical values. So here we go. So here I am in my y equals. I've put f double prime in y1. And for the interval, let me just check that. I want negative 1.5 to positive 1.5. So let me go to a window and negative 1.5 to positive 1.5. And then let me do zoom zero, zoom fit, to see what this looks like on a graph. All right, so here it is. Looks like we have one, two, three places where we're crossing the x-axis. It looks like negative 1, 0, and 1. Let's just double check that though. So let's see, second trace, zeros, and let's just go over here, enter to the left, press enter a little bit to the right, enter one more time, and that is indeed negative 1. And let's see here. You know, probably a faster way to verify this, since it looks like 0 and 1, let's just do alpha trace, y1, plug in 0 and see if that gives us 0. It does. And then let's just make sure 1 really is the other 0. It is. All right. So that means that based off this graph, negative 1, 0, and 1, those are our critical values. And now f double prime, let's see, we want concave down. So f double prime is going to be less than zero below the x-axis, it looks like, from negative infinity to negative one. Um, but we don't care about that. So really negative 0 0.5, 1 1.5 to negative one. And then also from zero to positive one. So this is our first interval. This is our next interval. And it looks like answer choice D is going to have both of those. So those are their concave down intervals. Answer choice D. For this problem, we're given the graph of F prime, and we want to know which of these statements has to be true. So let's look at them one at a time. Statement one, F has a relative min at X equals negative three. Well, if it does, then that means that F prime, whose graph we're given, should be changing from negative to positive at negative three. Looking at the graph, F prime is indeed changing negative to positive. So therefore, we do have a relative min at x equals negative 3. OK, so let's look at the second option now. Graph of F has a point of inflection at x equals negative 2. So point of inflection, the, the giveaway for that on a graph of F prime is if F prime reverses direction, changes either increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, that shows us that f has a point of inflection because it shows a sign change in f double prime. Looking at our graph, we see that at negative 2, the graph of f prime is not reversing direction. It's increasing, and then it's still increasing. So therefore, this is a no. We do not have a point of inflection there. And then for option 3, graph of f is concave down from 0 to 4. Well, if f is concave down, then f prime is going to be decreasing. Taking a look here, f prime is indeed decreasing from 0 to 4. Therefore, f is concave down there. So that's also a yes. Uh, so then it looks like options 1 and 3 worked. So that would be choice E. On this problem, we're given the graph of f. And we want to know at which of the spots on the graph between A through E, is it true that f double prime of x is less than f prime of x is less than f of x? So because they don't have any numerical values on here, probably what they're looking for is that one of these things is going to be negative, the other is going to be zero, and the other is going to be positive so that you could compare them without knowing their exact values. Um, so probably what we're looking for then, if it's all down to negative, zero, or positive, we want f double prime to be negative, which is to say we want f to be concave down. So looking at the different choices here, a looks like we're on a concave down interval there. B also. C, this interval is concave up. Same thing with D and E. So it looks like C, D, and E can be eliminated based off of F double prime being negative. All right. Well, if F prime is kind of in between, that means F prime is probably going to be zero, which means if F prime is zero, then that means you have probably some kind of smooth turnaround 
for the graph of f. In fact, if f double prime is negative and f prime is zero, you definitely have some kind of extrema. And again, if f double prime is negative, that means you should have a max at this value, but at the very least a turnaround. So looking at a versus b, um, a is not any kind of extrema, so we can eliminate that one. And it looks like we're down to b, but at this point, let's just contemplate what happens if f of x is greater than zero. That means that we should be above the x-axis. And taking a look at b, the sole survivor here, this point is above the x-axis, so that completely confirms that we are looking for choice b. On this problem, we're given the graph of f prime from negative seven to seven, and we're told that there are four zeros on this interval. Now, the reason they're telling us that there's four zeros is that this spot here where we appear to be bouncing, this might be one of those where if you zoomed in, maybe it's crossing and going down and then up. Um, but by them telling us that we have four zeros, we're guaranteed that this right here really is just one zero where we are not crossing the x-axis. So with that established, how many relative maxes does f have? Well, if we're given f prime, f prime is going to change from positive to negative wherever f has a relative max. So looking at the graph, we see that f prime is changing positive to negative only once in this spot right here. Since f prime is only changing positive to negative once, it follows that f has only one relative max on this interval. So that would be choice A. On this problem, we're given the function f whose derivative f prime is shown in the graph here. Based off of this information, we want to know how many points of inflection the graph of f should have. Well, points of inflection are going to happen wherever f prime is changing from either increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So f prime changes, reverses direction basically, how many times in this graph? Well, let's count. We got one, two, three, four, five, and this is six. So a whole bunch, six to be precise. So that means that F has six points of inflection, which leads us to answer choice E. For this no calculator free response, we're given the graph of F prime up here, and we're also given uh, that we have horizontal tangent lines at X equals one, three, and five. And we also have the areas between the graph of f prime and the x-axis labeled here for whatever that's worth at this point in your education. The function f of x is defined for all real numbers and satisfies f of 8 equals 4. All right, great. Um, so first part of this problem, we want to find all x values between 0 and 8 where the graph of f, not f prime, f has a local minimum. So taking a look at our graph, we notice that f prime is changing from negative to positive at x equals, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, at x equals six. Therefore, f has a local minimum at x equals six. For this part of the problem, we wanna know on what intervals between zero and eight is the graph of f both concave down and increasing. Well, if f is concave down, it means f prime must be decreasing. And if f is increasing, it means f prime must be positive. So we're looking for intervals where f prime is positive and decreasing. So where does that happen? Well, looking at our graph, uh, this interval from zero to one seems to be a positive decreasing interval. And let's see, this next one is increasing. The interval from four, no, this is three. Interval from three, down to four, that is also a positive decreasing interval. This next interval is negative, negative, negative. Here we're positive but increasing. Um, so it looks like only zero to one and three to four. Um, since F prime is decreasing and positive on these intervals, therefore F is concave down and increasing on those same intervals. For this last problem part, we're suddenly defining a new function G as F of X, the whole thing cubed. If f3 is uh, negative 5 halves, we want to find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals 3. So basically, we want to find g prime of 3. So we need the derivative of g, which is going to require the use of the chain rule. We've got something cubed, so the derivative of that is going to be 3 times the something squared. So 3 times f of x squared. 
times the derivative of the something, so that would be f prime. Now we're going to go ahead and plug 3 into all that. And let's just do this one piece at a time. f of 3, we need to know what that is. They actually told us that's negative 5 halves. So this is 3 times negative 5 halves squared times what's f prime of 3. Well, here's a graph of f prime. And it looks like if I plug in the x value 3, f prime is 4. They gave us the point 3 comma 4. OK. So now that we've got this written out as all constants, you could actually just stop and call this one done. But if you wanted to simplify, 3 times 4 is 12. Negative 5 halves squared is going to be 25 over 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 times 25 is 75. And that is as simplified as it's going to get.